here's some fun stuff. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot to go with this, but we'll, we're, we're, we're probably going to keep it pretty slow. We'll try to synthesize the information here. This is very complicated. All right, so here's what happened. Retron 5 gets announced. You all know what this is by now, but if you don't, it's a multi-system console that runs off of emulation as opposed to uh, on-a-chip technology. When the Retron 5 was coming out, Pat and I had a lot of discussion about what the emulation was going to be done with. And we all kind of assumed that they could not possibly be writing emulators from the bottom yeah, up. They weren't, take coding, too long. they weren't coding multiple they, emulators. They don't have the manpower. No. This would have to be... Uh, they would have to be paying licensing fees to popular emulators, probably like, you know, uh, SNES 9X. Or Nestopia. Or, or something FCE, like... FCE UX, which right. I use for NES. Yeah. So... Anyway, the Retron 5 gets cracked a couple days ago, and uh, what do you know? Our friends at Hyperkin uh, are totally using code that they basically stole and are making a profit off of um, under the explicit uh, end, like the user license agreements that say that they cannot. So, for instance, uh, that example about SNES 9X, it is actually the emulator that is running in Retron 5, and no... No one got paid for it. No licensing was bought, and they are making money off of something that they explicitly cannot make yes. money off of. So parts of their front end were stolen. I mean, this has this, potential to sink a company. Like this is this is civil suit stuff, right? And it, that this is a lot of money potentially coming out of their be, pocket. Because even if something is open source, doesn't mean you could do whatever you want with it. There there are license agreements even for quote-unquote free software but lots of open source is to be used expressly under the conditions that you don't make money off of it so this is the problem with this besides the fact that they not only didn't license it the fact that they're making a commercial product using this stuff they didn't attribute any of it either no so hyperkin got called out on this and they finally released it uh, um, I, I think uh, yesterday on their site saying finally they should have did this up front at the very least um they're using source code from the following open source projects vbam uh, Genesis Plug GX, FCEU, which I guess is part of the one I, FCEU X, probably a, a version of it. Yeah. And SNES 9X, one of the oldest and best Super Nintendo emulators. Doesn't even say the rest of them, though. That, right. that, that They're missing a few systems here. The Game Boy ones, I have no idea. Anything else. And then, and then one of the conditions for sometimes uh, using these open sources, like if you, you have to provide the source code that you're using. Right. And so they've now, on September 23rd, providing source code uh so people can look at it. They put out a message, Hyperkin. The source code is for each of these projects is copyright the respective authors who are identified in the corresponding source files. We endeavor to abide by the terms and conditions of each of the corresponding open source licenses. Should you be should you be one of the developers of a direct legal or a direct legal representative of one of the copyright holders of any of the aforementioned projects and feel that the software is being used in violations of its of its license, then please get in touch with us via email to discuss the matter further. So they are hoping probably that nothing's going to happen at this. It's going to be, well, these are small guys that are not going to go after us. They're playing dumb. They're, they're hope- playing dumb. They're yes. playing dumb, and they're hoping that the people who hold the power to basically yeah. take them to court don't have the money to take them to court. This is um, still... This is intellectual property. This Just because you create an emulator, which is totally legal, by the way, I don't want to hear any bullshit like, whoa, emulators yeah. are legal. No, creating an emulator is totally legal yes. to create an emulator. The fact of the matter is, you create that, you own that, you own that intellectual property. That's yours, so you can decide what you do with it. So if you put a license on it saying this is how it is to be used, it's free, but you cannot include it in a commercial product. That has to be abided by by law, right? So this isn't this isn't like this isn't like well, who cares stuff. This you, is legal stuff. You read, I mean, when you read that their letter, they say if you feel they're totally playing dumb as if they can't open their own fucking eyes and read i mean i haven't used an emulator in ages but something like snes 9x used to like open with like a little window that said this cannot be in- i think it was snes 9x you know or maybe it was nesticle this cannot be included in any commercial sale and you have to click okay to go through you know like this is not information that is that is not um available within the emulator that they're using Mm -hmm. you know i mean you you open the about window or the help window and it's going to be right there so offering that up as an apology or as like two months after is like offering someone a glass of lukewarm piss when they're thirsty it's stupid it's i mean it's it's ridiculous so so i was alerted to this by a few different people like three or four people basically and they they basically ran down because i don't know a lot about 
uh, these licenses. I don't know a, a lot about the, this GPL stuff, uh, but there are stuff. Uh, there are foundations for, I guess, open source software that take this very seriously. Oh, yeah. There have been lawsuits in the past. I'm guessing yes. to go after companies that have basically stolen. Uh, open source code and used it. I don't understand some of the various levels and things like that, but I mean, I understand that this is usually going to work out in the favor of the person who is making the complaint if they make the complaint. I think part of it, part of this is the fact that um, I guess it's called the TVOization. I've, I've been seeing that term, the TVOization of software. So basically, what that means is you are taking open source software and then restricting how it's used in your own program. Right. Which goes against the entire spirit of how it was intended to be used. So I guess this is the foundations of the GPL here. Um, nobody should be restricted by the software they use. There are four freedoms that every user should have. The freedom to use the software for any purpose. The freedom to change the software to suit your needs. The freedom to share the software with your friends and neighbors. And the freedom to share the changes you make. Um, so well, not only are they charging for it, but they're also basically jailhousing all the they're functions. Ja they're jailhousing something they don't own. Right. When a program offers all of these freedoms, we call it free software. So they're taking free software and then restricting everything for for profit, which is totally going against... So I'm not saying... I'm not, I'm not a legal expert at all, but it sounds like since this is over multiple people being violated... We're talking, these are not just a single individual. These could be multiple people that work in this over well, the years. Well, SNES too. 9X itself was, I mean, kind of like a, a, a relay baton. It was handed off from programmer to programmer to programmer. So I mean, in the late 90s? Going yeah, I mean, from, from, yeah, from the mid to late 90s all the way to, like, I would say it did end up, I think I think the project finished. I don't think they're still working on it. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's multiple, like, if they, if they wanted to write this just for the SNES 9X part, they would have to find all of the different programmers that had worked on it and work out either an agreement, get a signature that it was okay, pay them yeah. a certain amount of money. And, I mean, that's hard enough to do, not to mention all the other emulators that are on the system. Yeah, so it sounds like they never even went to these guys and asked permission. No. Be like, hey, can we do this? If they did that, be like, okay, you might be able to get away with it. They might have still, they might, they might have said no, because, hey, because you say you're, you're jailhousing the software. And you're restricting how we intended to be open and free. And you know. you know, a lot of people who make emulators, they weren't doing it to play free games. Just like, you know, hackers have this. Uh, you know, people think hackers are all about stealing data. These are no. people who just want to know the in and out of every aspect of a machine or a system or a computer. You know, for them, it was a quest of knowledge to get, you know, to see how see the guts of it and see how it worked. So they are likely to be very upset that you are restricting aspects of it so it, it sounds like <clears throat> this there's going to be legal ramifications it's it sounds like that there's either going to be uh, lawyers will probably be contacted at least so this could be something where an injunction might be they might go to a judge and just say we want these retron fives not sold yeah we want them off the shelf before even a lawsuit happens it's possible it could it could happen so i mean at that point uh, you might get to a point where you won't have a Retron 5 on the shelf. So, And, and it could also be, obviously, monetary damages to Hyperkin because they broke broke the uh, open source agreement for multiple multiple software. Yeah. Alleg allegedly, of course, all alleged at this point. Uh, but I got an email from someone that spelled it out, and these are guys that, I guess they wanted to wait. They probably figured, going back, these guys probably figured there was some shit going on, but they wanted to crack it and see the source code to be sure and get evidence. Well, yeah. Even you and I, who aren't we always programmers, we're we like, always were like, "Well, where the fuck is the emulation coming yes. from? Where is it coming from, and who do they license it from?" Because and, it was it was never and, told. And now we know, and we've even named some of it properly, which yes. is stupid. Front ends, GPL violations. Ah, uh, jeez. Oh, hyperkin. I mean, I don't know. I it's hard for me to feel any sort of bad for them with all the delays and. No, I mean. I, I feel bad because these are decisions that are made probably from the very top not to do it. I mean, and so you have the guys working on it, the grunts working on it. They don't... I just I, don't... Then again, it. it sounds like they're just hacking together. This, they're not programming themselves. They're just hacking this together from all the existing software. Oh, so uh, it actually didn't even sound that difficult. I don't... Feel, yeah, right. So why did we get the year delays? You know, I mean, I feel... And, I, and also, I don't, I don't feel like Hyperkin's a big company. I mean, this you, could be, you, you see the same guy in every video that's defending delays and stuff like that. You know what I mean? It's like well, this could be something that can put a company under. Yeah, it potentially could. If they get if they get a lawsuit for hundreds of thousands of dollars, that could be it. Done. 